Hey, hello everyone. Thank you for joining uh, February 2nd Open Alex webinar. We're really excited today to not have me do a lot of the talking, but instead to hear from some of the users of Open Alex. Um, so you'll be hearing today from, from two presenters from EPFL or L'Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne in Switzerland. Um, specifically in the academic data unit, we have Alex Nebel and Gael Bernard, who are going to be presenting some of the work that they're doing using Open Alex. And I'll turn it over to the two of you in just a moment, but just a reminder for those who are attending live, please do feel free to put your questions in the chat as we go. Myself and my colleague Jason Portnoy here are going to try and answer those live if they're relevant to Open Alex, but we'll also save those for, um, for the Q&A towards the end as well. So Alex and Gael, over to you. Thank you, Kyle. Um, I'm going to start with a few, uh, a, a little introduction. Thank you, first of all, very much for the inv invitation, um, for the early um, invitation for you guys. Um, we're very thrilled to be here, and uh, um, it's very rare, actually, in a in in a, in 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 an institutional uh, institutional researcher lifetime to be to be excited about. Uh, something and I, I think we're really excited about um, the work we, uh, we we try to leverage um, on open Alex and um, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit about this um, but first of all I'm just going to say a few words about who we are EPFL um, we are a technical school uh, based in Switzerland um, we have roughly have uh, 13,000 students maybe a uh, next slide Gail thank you um, we very much focus on science engineering and um, we're very international. Um, and uh, um, usually in the rankings, we're roughly in the in a top 50 uh, position. Uh, but here's a little wink to our colleagues from uh, CWTS uh, in the open ladder ranking. We typically rank uh, 12 in the PP top 1%. Um, we're going to talk about this, this ranking component in this um, in this presentation, but also about why we um, we, we came up with this work. Um, what we try typically to do in our units, and maybe some of you uh, have the, the, the same challenges, is in our case to try to be to provide a data-driven approach to our management um, on education, research, and tech transfer. And um, usually, the way we do this is by providing numbers on the way we are organized. That could be one possibility. Uh, so our departments, uh, our our institutes, um, so typically organizational uh, units like this, or we we try to get those rough classification um, from Web of Science, from from Elsevier, uh, that are typically journal based. Um, but when we get we, we take a look at our strategic plan. Um, uh, typically what you have uh, uh, here, uh, we don't really recognize the way we organized here. So we have strategic initiatives. Uh, we try to have an impact on sustainability. Uh, we try to map the, our digi digital skills. Uh, we try to be good in uh, and have an impact uh, in the Swiss society in the way uh, we, we we do research in energy, uh, and all these type of things are really transversal to the way EPFL is organized. And I've just, we have also broad objectives. So just Gail, if, if we can get back to the previous slide, I just want to focus on, um, I don't know, maybe it's a little small, but uh, the 3.4, where we try to promote a culture of open science as well. And I'm gonna get back to this in a minute, but we try to be data-driven, uh, but when it comes to the what we really want to do, which is our strategic plan, then it's much more difficult. Uh, it's much more difficult to provide numbers on how we contribute to sustainability, how we contribute to digitalization, and so on and so forth. Um, so yes, please, the, the next slide, Gaia. And uh, um, so we are in a need of a data-centric um, approach to understand ourselves in the end who we are, uh, where are we heading, at what pace, at what speed, how do we do this compared to the others? And the way, um, the, the work Gail is gonna present to you, uh, we really try to embed um, this open access approach, thanks to the great work done by our colleagues at OpenAlex, um, 
because it's part of who we want to be, who we are at EPFL, um, try to go beyond um, the way we organized, beyond this journal-based categorization. And that's what why we call the title um, uh, of this seminar tailor-made, uh, because we try to answer this question of how EPFL contributes in its strategy. We'll try to benchmark ourselves um, and try to, 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 to have uh, some trends here. So just before handing over to Gael, I think there's a really interesting momentum happening here uh, where um, open access, benchmarking, rankings, um, uh, and in generally speaking, data science converge into this um, topic. And, and what we're going to present to you is uh, our response to this, and we hope this will be useful to uh, to the audience. So, Gail, the floor is yours. And um... great, thank you so much, Alex. So, um, I will first uh, present the the data that we are using. So, it's of course related to OpenLX, and then um, we will demo two different dashboards: the exploratory one and the Tyler made one. And I will explain the difference, and then we will go into the Q and A session. So the data, it's of course OpenLX. Uh, you probably all you are probably all aware that it's a comprehensive catalog of scholarship indexing over 250 million scientific works. So there are different entities on OpenLX. Uh, so the most central one is of course the scientific work, but you also have institutions, sources, authors, publishers. And today we will really focus on those three because these are the three entities that we are using on the dashboard. So the concept here uh, are Wikipedia concepts. So there are 65,000 Wikipedia concepts in OpenLX and I will explain uh, what it means exactly. Uh, but basically when you have, when you check a paper on OpenLX, you don't see it here on the user interface, but if you access the data through the API or the raw data, you have access um, to the Wikipedia pages that are linked or tag to the scientific work. And we believe that this is really a powerful uh, feature. Uh, and I will explain it with uh, here with a, a graph. So let's say we have two different institutions. And by the way, this is only for illustration purpose, but we have, for instance, EPFL here and our big sister ETH Zurich here. And uh, when we publish academic work, uh, you have they are tagged on OpenLX with scientific, uh, with uh, Wikipedia concept. So we know, for instance, that this paper is related to machine translation. And if we look at ETH, it might be some other concept. And now if you start doing some graph analysis, maybe you might um, get some insights like, okay, this is interesting. Those two different institutions works on the same concept, but maybe they didn't uh, collaborate together. And this is the kind of insights that you can infer uh, using this kind of graph. And another feature is that you can not only tag scientific work, but you might tag, for instance, uh, courses that are taught at EPFL. And then you can have other insights saying, for instance, this is interesting. We are maybe a pretty pr productive uh, on a particular concept, but we don't have any courses on it. So that could be a good uh, insight to create a, a course. And um, so this idea of uh, visualizing or analyzing everything as a graph is something that we are already doing at EPFL. So it's another project. It's called EPFL Graph. Uh, I put the link here. Uh, so it's done by my colleague Francisco and his team. So they develop their own concept detection algorithm and they tag entities from EPFL. So courses, lecture, researcher. And uh, then what is powerful is that you can do this kind of analysis. But what is really interesting with OpenRx is that now we have access uh, to publication worldwide. So we can really start um, comparing ourselves with others. And uh, this is uh, what I will show in the exploratory dashboard. So the need is really basically to compare ourselves and also to detect trends. So I will briefly describe two uh, pre-processing that we are doing on the data. Um, so for instance, let's say we have the concept edge computing and the first pre computation that we have done is to normalize the data, because if you normalize the data, then you can start 
comparing different years, detect trends, but also compare yourself with others. So uh, for instance, here, the, the concept edge computing is 0 0.6 per mil publication in 2019. And what you can do once you have normalized the data is also to detect trends. So what we have done as a pre-processing is to run thousands of linear regressions for every institution, for every concept, so that then we, you can really list uh, those uh, trends and uh, highlight them in the, the dashboard. So now I will show the dashboard. So it's, uh, of course, entirely uh, based on data from OpenAlex. So the dashboard is here. Uh, it's not available publicly right now because we just started uh, doing this kind of dashboard and we really hope that we can share it uh, soon. But what we wanted to is to already uh, share it with the community and have some feedbacks. Uh, so here is the dashboard. You can see a Wikipedia concept here and it's in blue because uh, we detected a positive trend. So if I click on thematic, sorry, if I click on thematic analysis, you can see that indeed you have a positive trend worldwide in terms of fractions of publications. By the way, you can also switch to uh, another unit of analysis, which could be uh, citations. So for instance, um, if I switch here, uh, now the, the trend is not in the number of publication, but it, it's in terms of citation. And uh, you can detect trends for the number of citation. We can see that there are more and more citation about this particular concept. And what we like with Wikipedia is that it's transparent in the way that if you don't know what this is, you can just click on it and you are on the Wikipedia page and you can really um, check what, what this concept means. So this is one way uh, on how you can explore the data, see the positive trends. So you have many different concepts. Altogether, again, 65,000 concepts. So it could be a little bit hard to navigate in this. Um, and this is why we made also a tailor-made dashboard, but I will go back to this later. If you have also a specific uh, concept that you would like to explore, you can go in concept. I will look for my favorite one, which is process mining, uh, because this is basically my field. If I click on process mining, I can see here that it's in gray because we don't have any trends. And, um, and you can see the, 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 the fraction of publication, which is about process mining worldwide. What is nice is that you can also see the, the ranking. Um, so this is the ranking on process mining. Um, here, I have to highlight that it's not the 100,000 institution that we have in OpenRx because this was a proof of concept. We selected 160 universities. Um, so it, it's not uh, all the data, but uh, basically that was just because we wanted to do this first proof of concept. But it, I, we believe that it would be interesting to uh, incorporate all the institutions worldwide. So we can see, for instance, here that the Netherlands are pretty good in process mining, which is not really surprising if you know the field. You can also look at the, the absolute numbers, but of course, bigger university will uh, be more, uh, will be higher in the ranking. Um, so this is one way to explore the data. And you can also go university by university. So here we'll select uh, ourselves, EPFL, and uh, you can see the positive trends here. So this is a trend that was detected as positive for EPFL. Um, and I will just show a few examples. So this was for the number of citation, but I can switch back to publication maybe. And you can see the different concepts where we detected a positive trend or here concept where we detected a negative trends for EPFL. And so you can, we can also easily compare ourselves with an average, uh, with the, the average of the 160 universities universities. We also have something that we call the signature concept. So it's concept where we detected that we do really more than uh, other universities. And for instance, this one, it can still be read with a negative trend because it seems like we do more and more of disensitized solar cell, uh, but still um, we publish more in this particular concept um, compared to the average of all universities. So that, that's it basically for the exploratory dashboard. We call it like this because you might use the dashboard and without 
really knowing what you're looking for. It's just exploring how the concept evolve over time for your particular uh, institution. And um, now I will explain what we mean by a tailor-made dashboard. So why do we call it tailor-made? Is that as Alex, Alex mentioned, we have a strategic plan, uh, we have some ambition, but can does our scientific output really reflect what we have in the strategic plan? So this is the main question. Or the other question is, how can we measure what we have in a strategic plan in terms of uh, what we publish? And there is a missing piece here. We believe that this missing piece can be, uh, we call it the area. So we believe that the area could be one way to address the, the translation between a strategic plan and an operational dashboard. So an area is basically a set of Wikipedia concepts of interest. So it might be, for instance, artificial intelligence. So in artificial intelligence, you would have many different concepts that are related to artificial intelligence, such as data mining, machine learning. Uh, you might have hundreds of different concepts in this area. You can think about other areas. So all these are all areas that appear uh, in our uh, strategic plan. But you can also think of some areas that could be interesting that are not maybe not strategic for you. Um, but for instance, we have some concrete use case where um, people at EPFL would be really interested to know what courses we have that are related to the uh, to the area of psychology. And it's maybe it might be not a strategic area for us, but it's still interesting to use an area to define it, define what we call psychology, and then. Uh, you can retrieve the data using uh, the, the, the area. So in OpenRx, there are 65,000 um, concepts. And so the, one of the difficulties is to really select them and uh, select the concept that would be related to the, the area. So let's think about, for instance, artificial intelligence. As I mentioned, you might have hundreds of different concepts. So what we have built is a tool that would allow uh, define an area. So I will do a, a demo. Okay, so we call this tool the area sketcher. So basically you can enter whatever you want, for instance, computational thinking, or maybe let's do artificial intelligence. It doesn't have to be a Wikipedia concept. I will add maybe a small typo at the end just to, to show that it, it, it doesn't have to be uh, a Wikipedia uh, concept. So then you have, um, the, the tool will try to suggest some concept that could be part of the area. So the user will have to basically use this tool and check if the, he agrees or she agrees with the, 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 the concept here. Um, if you are not sure what the concept means, again, uh, the, the, the power of Wikipedia is to be transparent. So you can open the Wikipedia page and um, check. Here, I would say that it's part of AI, so I would leave it. Um, let's say that we quickly selected all of them and we agree that it's a good uh, definition of artificial intelligence. Um, now, because in the backend, what we are building is a classifier, a binary classifier. So you also need to have some concepts that are not related to AI. And um, so you can quickly check, let's say that we agree that they are not related to um, artificial intelligence. Maybe I will just remove one just for the example. But then you click next. And basically, we have now 55 concepts in annotated. So 28 are positive and 27 are negative. And based on this, we classify the 65,000 concepts from um, that are available in OpenLX. And they are all uh, visible here, so 708. And of course, maybe uh, doing a classifier with only 55 annotation, uh, the classifier might not be so strong. So you can go here and add more annotation. So typically for network processor, um, uh, I would say that maybe it's not, let's just do it quickly uh, for the 
for the demo, but cross of di dimensionality, I would say yes. So it adds more and more annotations here and it will change the, the, the current area. Let's uh, reduce the amount of concept here. I will exclude lots of concepts. I can go here. So this is the, the current concepts that are part of artificial intelligence. I can, uh, if I don't agree, change it here also. But the main point here is that once you are happy with the current area, you can download either the 65,000 Wikipedia concepts uh, and along the score, or you can only download the positive one. So this is what we are going to do here. And I mentioned that uh, I will demo another dashboard, which is called the TylerMade dashboard. But in fact, it's, it's the exact same dashboard um, here. So instead of navigating using the concept here, you can go in area and then upload the file that we just downloaded. So this file is simply a JSON file with all the page IDs of the Wikipedia page that are in the area. You open it. And now you have uh, this area here and you can select it. We can check what is in the area, but basically we have the same chart as before, but now it's for not only a single concept, but it's for a collection of concepts. And you also have the ranking. So it's the exact same dashboard, but now it's not an exploratory dashboard because you know what you are looking for and you just want to measure it. Um, and there is also another way on how you can maybe leverage those kind of uh, areas. Um, I will show it uh, here. This is another idea that we have on how we can leverage the data from OpenAlex uh, is to plot them in two dimension. Here we could use the uh, Wikipedia concept to explain um, like typical uh, region of the, the map. And as you zoom in, you see more and more um, Wikipedia concept that explain the area. And if you click on a point, so points are scientific work from EPFL. If you click on them, you can uh, get the title and the abstract. So this is another way to navigate in the data, which we believe could be uh, also interesting. And now uh, we could also uh, add another layer to this map with the area. It seems like I have a small <laughs> issue, sorry. I will, by the way, there is a link to the YouTube video here. So what you can do is also uh, check the video here. Um, so it's basically on the top left, you can, I will play it here full screen. You can select artificial intelligence and then you would have area of the map that appear here in red. And um, so you would know that this area is close to artificial intelligence. And points that are red are uh, publication from EPFL that were tagged with concepts that are part of the area. So this two-dimensional map could also be used to do some fingerprints uh, because one of the goals that we, we have is also to compare ourselves with peers, peer institution. So for instance, you can visualize how EPFL looks uh, compared to other Swiss uh, institutions. And I think we believe that it's an interest, interesting way to look at the data. So as a summary, we are really thrilled to, to have uh, access and everyone has access to OpenAlex. So we believe that it, it's it's really nice because then you can really start to do some analysis that matters to you. And uh, also we believe that Wikipedia uh, is a good way uh, to add a layer of transparency and, and explainability. And we develop different tools. So the dashboard, uh, we call the one without areas, the, the exploratory dashboard. So you can just explore the data and um, 
if you have a, st a specific things that you would like to measure, you can define it in an area using the, the area sketcher and then apply the area inside the, the dashboard or into a two-dimensional map. So this is pretty much a summary of what we presented today. Um, so the vision that we have is that this kind of uh, like tools, they are probably useful not only for us, but for other institutions worldwide. And we believe that it would be really nice to do some uh, collaboration to really share codes, share vision, or share different ways to do, to do things. Uh, we are dreaming with Alex of some, um, I don't know, dashboard where every university can contribute with their own plugins if they want to play with the data in, in different ways. And um, we believe that it would also be nice to have uh, like a platform where, where you can share areas because maybe that would be really interesting instead of every time redefining uh, like 100,000 institutions having their own definition of artificial intelligence. Could we have something where different people can contribute uh, like we have on Wikipedia where maybe um, people could comment and uh, vote for different areas and we would have some areas that you could maybe apply directly on your own data without having to define it. And we also believe that having a way uh, to define areas could be also really interesting because maybe different institutions have different vision of what they mean by artificial intelligence. But if you use an area, you can really pinpoint concepts where maybe two different people uh, do not agree on the same definition. So yeah, we really believe that it would be really nice if we were not like uh, 100,000 people from all institutions working on the same little dashboard, but if we could maybe uh, collaborate somehow to have one uh, powerful dashboard. So yes, we are near the end of this presentation. We can go into the Q&A uh, session. If you have any question that we don't have time to address today, please do not hesitate to, to reach me. I put my email address here. We will share the slides also. Uh, so yeah, um, um, thanks a lot for, for your time. Thank you both for that presentation. I do just want to echo at the end that vision of having this be open is so important to us as well. And I'm in this unique role where I get to hear the things that people are doing at other universities and people are starting to have the same conversations sort of internally in their silos. And for us, it's so important to be able to talk about this in the open because we all benefit from that development. So I really appreciate you coming and sharing this today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks everyone who is uh, watching this afterwards and everyone who's attending now. We're going to go into live Q&A and I can see there's already some questions coming in. So thanks again. Thank you, Kate.